Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with, as always, another 100% achievement and trophy guide. And this time we're getting all in the hilarious golden, the Procession of Calvary. Now this was developed by Joe Richardson, Nephilim Game Studios, published by Digerati, and is available to you usually for $12.49, but for this week it's on sale for £8.36. Of course, watch out and grab any future sales that happen. So this is, as, well... Let's see if someone gave you a blank check and a bunch of all wacky, blacky, fluffy, wuffy, L to the S to the D, etc, etc, and said, whatever you want to do, put it together and we'll publish it. So that's how the game seems, but it is seriously in a good way. It's funny, hilarious, and it's not too de tedious with what it wants from us. Basically, our job is to find new tyrant Heavenly Peter and slice his delightful sack off. As for achievements, a few are story related, but a lot are for missables, so keep your eyes and ears peeled for everything I do and grab. Timestamps will be provided in the comment be box below in case of confusion or where and what you need. So, we basically need two playthroughs, one short and one really short. We can get this done in roughly around an hour or so. So, with that being said then, let us begin. And you can ignore the settings, what I'd done earlier, I just uh, popped the music down ever so slightly. And we can begin. Now there's going to be um, nude, there's going to be butt and boobs and hilarious and death and... There we go, so the first one we uh, slice off a head. Stab a couple of guys right here. Uh, but this is all automatic, this is basically just an automatic cutscene of our dear lady friend. The, um... I don't know, what, what do we call her, the woman in the... <laughs> the woman on the £10 note, British style. I forget her name. We'll just call her Tenor, because she's just the person on all of the uh, banknotes here in the greatest of Britain. So, uh, press, the a uh, press the A button to smash through all of the dialogue. Um, obviously, it, it's uh, fairly straightforward with the controls. If you hover at the top of the screen, that is where we uh, find our inventory. So the first thing we're doing, you need to actually click on the ground to go to places. So go to the left slightly, and there's scissors in the back of this guy. So make sure to grab them by pressing on these scissors first, and then choosing the option. Go to the right slightly, and then interact with the Pope just once. So if you press the A button on the Pope, press the hand option. That's basically the interact option. We'll give him a little smack and a bum. And he loves it. Don't say you don't like it, Bishop. We know you all love it. Maybe we're a bit old for you, but still, anyway. So after you get that achievement then, uh, speak to Immortal John and then choose the second option every single time. <laughs> and that is it for this part then. So, yes. So, uh, with walking, if you double click um, on the ground or wherever you want to go just once, double click it once, um, basically Tenor here will start running, um, as you'll be able to see. Uh, now, as usual with all the adventure and point-and-click games, um, obviously we, we need to collect a lot of items. Uh, choose the final option. I guess we should go and find you some ores then, eh? And what the hell is going on with this guy? I see your butt, the dangly little ball sack, and I've got no idea what's going on right there. Anyway, we'll just come back to that. So the first thing we're going to do is talk to the resting knight on the floor. So again, press A on him once, and then choose the talking option. Then choose the first option, what's up? Next, we are going to choose the first option again. And then we are going to choose the last option. So, give me it. Never mind. So, um, go up to your inventory and use the scissors with the resting knight. Again, just press the A button to pick them up and then use it. Uh, again, by pressing the A button there. And then choose the Rattison knight. And then interact with him. So, it... it, it Mainly we'll be using the hand option. I'm going to say interact with, so just so you know exactly what's going on. So we need to talk to um, what's more commonly known as the cripple. Um, man, Joe went to town on this game. And we're going to need to choose the top option. Can I borrow your crutches? Don't worry, what we need them for? We need to break up the, 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 the two men, the two naked men down there. Sort of. Nah, we'll leave them to it. They look like they're having a good time. Well, at least one of them does anyway. <laughs> so press the A button there. Just keep smashing through the dialogue. <laughs> the, the guy's gonna fall. It's just, it's just brilliant. And then we should get our second achievement: abused democracy. <laughs> Head to the left. And now, what we're gonna do is make a save here. Um, otherwise, you'll have to start again. It's only a couple of minutes, but you don't want to start again. So make a save. Go into uh, press start. 
press save, and then head off the cliff. Jump down, suicide yourself. God is watching. But apparently that's fine. What we're going to do then, crush this rabbit. Unlucky mucker. Wrong place, wrong time, my friend. Uh, but basically, as soon as the achievement unlocks, make sure to press start and load up the save immediately. So as soon as you see it, press the load button there because basically the game auto saves very quickly. So you'll have to do it again. So important to do that. Anyway, we're going to head back down now to the guy with the boat. Uh, again, we're going to ignore uh, <laughs> these two. Look like they're having fun. Or well, again, the one of them does. So use the oars with the guy. And then what you need to do is press the X button. And that will whip your sword out. And then press the A button on the rope. And then use the sword icon right there. That will chop it off. And then we are good to go. So my tenor lady, let's fly over. Look at my massive key. That's pretty big, but we're not going to care about that. Choose the bottom option to get the hell on out of there, boy. Uh, we're not impressed. Uh, that's probably fake. Um, and he tells us to piss off. Nice. So this woman is a, a bit of bit of a jerk off. Tenor is not impressed with that. Anyway, we need to choose every single option just the once. So choose the first option once, then the second, then the third option once, and then say I'm on it. I'm on it. Then, after all that is done, we're going to head to the left part of the screen now. So, where the uh, finger is, you're going to follow the finger all the way up the nose, uh, up the mountain, until we get to this delightful looking bit with all seven heads and everything. So, um, just head to the left, past all the seven heads and weird dancey things. Um, and we're going to go just sort of directly behind us right there, down, down the path. Really got no idea what's going on, but god damn, I like it. Um, so, what we're going to do here is make a save. This is very important, actually, because for the second playthrough, we need to not kill anyone. So, get out your sword. Make sure to save it. Then, whip your sword out by pressing the X button. And then, what we need to do is basically kill the archer on the very right-hand side, the nude bowman. So again, press A to select him, then choose the uh, sword, and give his little weenie the slice of life. Gibby! And that'll get us the first blood achievement and get electrocuted to hell. Where our uh, knight and I, I, I... Well, I don't know what's going on. But anyway, slice up the middle guy. So he... She did. Yeah, I think it looked like a he did. It did. Then smash through the dialogue, and then what we're going to do is slice up the guy on the very left as well. So the, the man tied to a tree with an apple on his head. Make sure again that your sword is out with the X button. Then press the A button. A button again on the sword. Give him the decapitation of a lifetime. I'm sure he's pretty happy with that. Basically cheated our way to getting the apple off his head. Anyway, heading back to the right now. We're going to head back all the way to the right to the main sort of area, if you want to call it that. Follow the finger, finger, finger. Follow the finger. Head down to the sort of main area. Basically, what we're going to do is kill the left guard's keeper right here, the left gatekeeper. So again, make sure your sword's out. Interact with him by pressing the sword button. Look at... <laughs> my massive sword beats your massive key. 
and my massive dong beetle. Actually, it doesn't. Not when a sword's involved. So basically, the um, big infused god just lets us go through there. So happy days. And now we see where the heavenly Peter resides. So just head all the way to the left until you see the only boat on the only bit of water with the only boat keeper. Or the ferryman as he is n more commonly known in this archaic region. We are going to slice and dice him as well mind. So again press the X button to whap your sword out, press the A button and easily slice him in half. That is, now that is an unfortunate way to go. But basically we can now take the unmanned vessel. Again, put your sword away by pressing the X button or by clicking on the sword icon and then just <laughs> go along with the, the legs of the unmanned vessel. Anyway, head to the church on the right hand side, the sort of only door. Uh, yeah, lots going on in this game. Really fantastic. And again, just smash through the dialogue for the time being. Uh, but we're going to be choosing the fourth option. Which is uh, basically female vicar and my guard. What's going on? He, she tells us to piss off. Now we need to interact with a tiny lion. And that is going to get us the achievement. Who's a good boy? If it ain't a cute ass dog. It's a cute ass lion who doesn't destroy us. Which is nice. Next you see the two guys on the left. We need to just interact with them. With the hand icon. Around seven or eight times. <laughs> to get the brawler option. Now, this is really what I hope things were like way back when. You know, you see it in the Bible and it's all thisoth or thathoth or Jebus and all that. I really hope everyone spoke like this and just give each other slaps to death because that would be fantastic. So, whip your sword back out anyway. Give these two brawlers a slice of life and you will unlock the serial killer achievement. Providing you've killed everyone on the path that I have. Um... <laughs> And basically we are coming up to the end of the first playthrough now. So basically you can slice up this guy in the red dress as, a, <laughs> as well, just in case, you know. And basically now the guy says, okay, now I'm intimidated. Which, to be fair, if you've been on a murderous rampage, you would be pretty intimidated as well. So we're going to head to the right. We're going to the throne room. It's only one big room that we can go in. So... Follow da finger, 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 and there is Heavenly Pete on his throne. So head down towards Heavenly Peter, and then what you need to do is whip out your sword, again using the X button, you should probably know that by now. <laughs> What's up dickwards? Hilarious. So try and kill Heavenly Peter, and this is basically the end of the first playthrough. Unlucky tenor, maybe you should just stick to um, going back to banknotes perhaps. So then, to unlock the end ending one achievement, what we need to do, basically, you see, we are on the right with our bountiful bosoms out on our hairy belly. A lot hairier than mine as well, which is unfortunate. We just need to tr uh, choose the crucified man and scream around seven or eight times. Everything about this scene, I don't know whether to be scared, horny, or laugh my head off. Why not all three? Let's just do that then. So, but just keep... Um, keep choosing the crucified man with the only option until the achievement unlocks. Oh my god. Joe, yeah, what a guy. What a guy. So maybe we'll uh, have a little shave of the old bush right there. But as soon as the achievement unlocks, press the start button and load up your first save once again. 
Um, we're going to load up the save as we go for a shave. Goodbye. So, yes, just load up the first save again, and we will be back to where we saved it first. Now we need to go through this playthrough without killing anyone. So, what we're going to do then, talk to the nude bowman on the right-hand side. I mean, we can really smell the cheese. I don't think they bath much back in the day. And choose the third option anyway. Are you going to shoot the dang apple off the chump's head? Again, smash through the dialogue. That's fine. Happy days. Hardcore. Somehow the gut man tied to a tree is a couple of, full of bows, but he's still good to go. So pick up the apple, which is just on the left-hand side there. So make sure to be grabbing that apple off the man's head. And then we should be good to just nip onto the right now. So, well, thanks very much. Um, maybe we should put some water on that thing. It looks a little infected. Anyway, we're going to head to the right-hand side now. And we're going back to whatever the hell this is. Um, but we need to uh, get our sword out and interact with the tree in the sort of middle. The one with the man tied to a wheel. <laughs> so, <laughs> chop him down. And then just interact with the wheel to pick it up. Again, God knows where you're shoving this man on the wheel, but I don't suppose it's a pr the prettiest of place. Probably a bit hairy, I assume. Anyway, we're going to head all the way back to the right now, down into the main area again. Remember, of course, to double-click A once to run. That just helps you go a little bit faster, obviously, which makes sense. That's what running normally does, makes you go faster. So... Get your wheel out again, hover at the top of the screen there, get the wheel out, use it with the cart, and then use the apple with the donkey, and then, well, man, we're going to be purged, as you'll see. So that was a pretty good trick then, <laughs> she, that woman and her kid just left us behind. But we're going to come to this area, the sort of town area, if you'd like. We're going to head all the way to the left and talk to the ferryman again. Remember, we're not killing anyone this time, which is sad because those were some epic deaths. But we are going to be speaking to the ferryman this time, and we're going to choose the top option. Will you take me to the other side of the lake? And then we are basically going to choose the um, second option. Oh, sorry, the bottom. No, we don't need any further questions. My bad. We can just move on. Uh, but we're going to head to the right. We're going to speak to the merry townspeople. Now, everyone looks drunk and like they're having a good time. The ones at the top. The merry townspeople. So we're going to go ahead. And this is basically for the start of an an another achievement as well. Zong. WTF. Hilarious. <laughs> Hello, strange lady. Uh, basically, we're going to choose the top option. Are you some sort of magician? And then choose the top option again. What kind of tricks do you do? And then once more, we are going to choose the top option. So can you teach me to wow come wowder? Because, oh, I wonder what this reminds you of. <laughs> anyway, from here, then we should be good to go. So choose the bottom option. I'm going to walk away. But what we do actually need to do is head back to the right. And then we're going to go all the way to the right again. We're going into the graveyard now. Ooh, spooky. So all the way to the right. And then what we need to do, unfortunately... Um, I mean, put some pants on, Pete, for God's sake. Oh, and then we've got the horny men. Don't interact with the horny men, because you don't want to know what happens when you interact with horny men. Um, <laughs> but we're going to choose the big old berries just in front of the old horn dogs. Pick, pick those up, interact with them, and then we can head back. Sorry sorry that you died there, Naked Pete. That that looked an unfortunate death. Anyway, we're going back into the town now. So basically just in the middle where the two guards keepers are, or the gatekeepers, or whatever. And then we're going to interact with the merry townspeople once more. Uh, speak with them. 
Again, obviously using the speak option because that's how you speak to people normally, unless it's through your ass. Now, uh, choose the top option. Here's your dang berries, and then that will unlock us the uh, magician's assistant number one. Zomg, what the fudge. <laughs> Fantastic. Anyway, we get our boat pass, and now we can head back to the left and give the boat pass to the ferryman. See? Simples. Together we made it! But we haven't quite made it yet. But we are going to interact with the right hand side for the church. Head on in, see what's up. And do you think we're going to get through this time? We are absolutely not. Uh, so what we're going to do is choose the uh, second option there. Then we'll be choosing option number three. So the third dialogue option there, get that on you go. And then we're going to choose the third dialogue option once again. Are you trying to solicit a bribe? Yes, please. Anyway, when this is done, we can head back to the left and back through to the town. Interact with the godliest of boatmen. Boatmen, the only boatman in town, and we're going to head just back to the other side. Thankfully, we don't slice them in half, so we don't have to swim over. I assume our bubbers and our armor will weigh us down anyway. So, once we are back to the other side, this cutscene will happen. So, we are going to walk our merry ass all the way to the right, but we're going through the bottom door this time. So, you've got the door in front of us, but this time we're going to the bottom right-hand side door. So, stick your finger in the bottom and go through the door. <laughs> we're going to talk to the big old Beyonce-looking chick on the right-hand side. She kind of looks like Beyonce, sort of, with her eyes closed. With my eyes closed. And we're going to choose um, about the talent contest. So, choose about the ta talent contest. And then we are going to choose the second option again. Uh, how is a winner selected? And then from here, we can just choose the bottom option to get the hell on out of there. We will be back. Weird looking Beyonce. So we're going to head to the left. Basically, we're going through the door uh, closest to the ferryman. Uh, nobody's questioned where we're going and why we're doing what we're doing, so we can just carry on. So we're going to interact with the um, little blessed dressmakers here. So talk with them, and what we're going to ask is, Can you make a dress for pretty old me? I need to be in a photo shoot to go on the £10 note later. So, thanks very much. So we'll be back for our dress, so okay, I'll leave you to it. And from here, we're going to go to the left-hand side and basically talk with the sad man, who's basically the composer. But he is right there, the sad man. Interact with the Freddie Mercury-looking dialogue option and then choose, Will you write a song for me? I need to be on a tempo note later and my voice has to be goddamn gorgeous. Fantastic. So, uh, whip into your inventory at the top of the screen and just interact with the music sheet once. Um, don't worry about trying to remember all this, uh, um, obviously our little tenor f lady friend here will do that. Interact with the door behind us or in front of us, and we're just going to head through onto the other side where... What the hell are you playing on the left hand side? I can't tell from here, I'm going blind. Anyway, we're going to interact with the very, very leftmost window, and then what we're going to do is... Well, we're going to go for a jump. This time though, we're not going to die, which is a nice. Right, what you need to do here though, you have to be quite quick, um, there's going to be a fish, and basically if you take too long, the fish will actually flop away, and you'll actually miss an achievement there. So what you need to do, smash through the dialogue quickly as you can, whip out your sword, and then interact the sword with the fish to give him the little <laughs> of life. I don't know what that was meant to signify, maybe the fish crapped itself, but it's all good. Once that's done, we can pick up the fish and then head all the way back to the town. <laughs> Uh, 
Right then, so now we are going to go and win 1800's Britain's Got Talent. But this is probably better than the crap than that of today. Anyway, we're going to head uh, all the way into the town, all the way to the left. We're going to go and pick our bountiful, beautiful dress. Straight through the door. And the dress is just on the floor next to the uh, chickadees and chickadoos making other crap. So pick up the dress. Delightful. We don't have to watch ourselves get changed, thankfully. And so we're going to head out and we're going to head all the way back to the right down to the bottom door where the original Britain's Got Talent was. Which means no Simon Cowell, no other wieners, no other useless people who only win because they've got the best sob story. None of that crap. This is on pure talent. So speak to the tall Beyonce looking lady again. And obviously, this time, we are going to check, choose the third option. I'd like to enter the talent contest. I can sing, so choose the top option. And job done. Now, there is a specific order, and you have to do them in a specific time. Um, I've put them up on screen for you, so just follow very carefully. Um, in terms of what number dialogue option that you have to go for. So, here we go. We're going to start going, etc. So obviously you've got one, so that'll be the first dialogue option. So the next dialogue option, quickly choose number three. The, the one after that, choose the second one, etc, etc. But you've got to do them quite quickly, otherwise you'll get a note wrong. And if you end up failing, you can just restart the talent show anyway. But it just takes a couple of minutes extra to do. So the best part, in my opinion, of the game is coming up right now, or the funniest part, at least, anyway. So everyone's like, oh my god, hello, I'm Simon Cowell, and then they go... <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Seriously, that, that made me buckle my ass off, and that was fantastic. So we will get the necklace. Oh, hello. So you're not a tall Beyonce-looking lady. You are three midgets in a costume. Happy days. So anyway, we're going to head all the way back out now. We've done what we need to do. Now we're going to get signed by the Queen and all that crudsters. We're going to head into the door, which is just behind the Merry Towns people. And so when we're here, we're going to go into the left room. I am pointing right, but I actually mean left, which is left. And we're going to go into the greatest after party ever. So we're going to be speaking with the guy in the blue uh, suit there. And what we're going to ask him for... Fantastically and hilariously, the third option, can I have a bump of your snuff? Which, of course, in today's language, is k k k k -ing. So, we've got that, and now we can just say, toodaloo, old chap. And he's going to be like, bruh, I'm off my nut. Are you taking the piss out of me? Um, and we're saying yes, because we are hilarious. So, we've got a bump of snuff. Hilariously, we're going to head back out. And we are going through the right back to the main area, or the sort of front of the main area. And then we're going to be heading up left to go back to where we got the wheel, the apple and the cart. Or the man with the wheel cart. Or the man trapped on the wheel cart, whatever it was. But that's where we're heading, back up the hill. And we need, basically, if we just head to, uh, past the severed heads, and stand just in the middle right here, we are going to be street speaking to the street magician, who is on the upper right so speak to him, and then what we need to do is choose the second option. Basically, we need a full human skeleton and a pair of pliers. So choose the second option first, and then the first option second. I hope that bit wasn't too confusing for you. No, you got it. So we obviously need to do something for him because that is the logic in video games. We don't get nothing for free in games, girl. 
Just keep heading right and back down to the main frontal area. And when we're here, we're going all the way to the right to the graveyard now. So all the way past big uh, steroid-infused Dwayne Johnson right here. Even bigger than Dwayne Johnson. And his little friend. Uh, what we need to do is pick up the human skeleton or the pile of bones directly in front of us. So that will do for that. Now we're going to head back out. And basically we need to go back to the area. But back to the area where we picked up the apple a bit earlier on. So all the way back to the left now. Only if I just realised that I could have done this bit first, then gone to the graveyard second. So apologies for the uh, bit of a run around there. But hey, you know, you get to see more beautiful screaming death. Anyway, head to the back of the area then, past this bit. <laughs> the guy on the left. And I never thought I'd say this in a video game or any commentary or anything. But we need to get our bump of snuff out, our kick a cane, and give it to the gnome. So what we're going to do is basically give drugs to a gnome and... <laughs> wow. Schneit is going to hit the fan. <laughs> F awesome. Pick up the players on the ground, which has just come off the naked roasty guy, and <laughs> head back. And we're going to give them now to the um, mad, uh, street magician. So speak to him first on the right. Choose the third option, what's in it for me. And, um, sorry, I'm still getting over what just happened here. So say, okay, bye. And then, obviously, we're going to be giving him the pile of bones and the pliers. Do we really just give a little gnome a uh, whole, what looked like a couple of grams of cocaine? Jesus. What a time to be alive in this era, huh? <laughs> Things certainly look mental. So now we're going to be going all the way back to the right to the graveyard. So that is where we are heading. So ignore my previous statement about going back and forth. We need to make two trips anyway. And it's always easier for us to have done the graveyard last anyway. So uh, we need to speak to the hey, go away horny men. <laughs> Very fantastic pun, but we do need to speak to the rock. By the way, I only just realized that was a pun, which is bad for me. Uh, makes me look hilariously silly. Um, <laughs> but we are going to be choosing the third option. What well, seems to be the officer problem. Uh, now we need to choose the third op option again. Will you give me the boy if I help you? And then the third option again. Try pushing from your side. As soon as we do that, interact with the rock again. And then interact with it using the hand option. That will push it. If you don't do it in time, you just have to go through that little bit of dialogue option again. And that should be the next achievement, Magician's Assistant number three. Now we can head into the cave and we've got a few things going on. Uh, which I can't even explain really, but we're going to be picking up the Satanic Altar with the Sacrificial Lamb. So we're going to be picking up the lamb. And next, weirdly to say, we're going to pick up the supple young boy with rosy cheeks and a pert little butt. Well, I feel disgusting. <laughs> and now uh, we're going to interact with the b barrel full of bugs. Why is there a goblin playing guitar? Why is a woman with no bra on doing things and getting poked in the head? I'm so confused in a hilarious kind of way. So once we're out here, we're going to uh, interact with the grave using our eyes. We need to be looking at the grave this time rather than picking anything up. Because, damn man, that shit heavy. So look with your eyes, not with your hands. And this bit's also goddamn hilarious as well, so ch um, choose the lamb, move him to the dead guy, we're going to grab the book, and then the guy's going to be all like, can't argue with that, <laughs> this dude is flipping adorable. And that is also another big plus of hilarity in my book. So, the not-so-dead guy then, we've given him the lamb, we've got the holy book, so make sure we've got that, because we need it for another achievement, then we're going all the way back up to the left. 
And again, we're going to just nip past these severed heads and all the screaming things. And some of them look like they're orgasming, which is hilarious. But they're actually in pain, so that's probably not good. Head to the back, and then what we're going to do now is we're going to go and put the book on the left guy's head. The man tied to the tree on the very left. We're going to put the book. Remember we took the apple from him earlier on? Or got the archer to shoot the apple off his head? So make sure to put the book on his head and then speak to the archer, the new bowman on the right. And then choose the third option. Are you going to shoot the dang book off his head? Now what this should do is get to the holy book achievement. For whatever reason for me, it didn't unlock at all throughout the game. Um, until I went on True Achievements and done that a little bit. Um, it, it basically looked fine on True Achievements, but the Holy Book Achievement didn't unlock for me on screen. So, as I've said, Holy Book should unlock for you right now. Or it should already be done. So, once the achievements are done, make sure to pick up the Holy Book off the guy's head. And now we are going to head back. I was going to have a little check. Don't go too far yet, though. Um, we need to grab the bugs. The barrel, a couple of bugs that we got, and we need to use that with the skunk. So when the skunk comes by, press A on it, and you've made a nice little friend for life. Not one you'd particularly want to share a bed or anything with, but till do, till do. So now we're going to head all the way back down to the frontal lobal area. So, with the book, we're going to head back into the townal area. Area? Sorry, I've been saying that quite a bit today, haven't I? Um, now, what we... <laughs> you don't need the book yet. Um, I was still confused about the holy book achievement not unlocking. But like I said, it should unlock for you as we head to the door behind the townspeople. Next, we're going into the right door. And we're going to have a little bit of conversation with the librarian right here, who has a book on his head for some reason. Um, but we are just going to give him the holy book straight away, and that is going to unlock us the achievement. Job bang toidy. Nice. So, with the King for a Day achievement done, we can get the hell on out of there, boy, and head to the left. All the way left, and we're going to talk to the guy in the blue suit, the snuff sniffing snob. Try saying that fast three times. Snuff, 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 snub. Anyway, what we're going to do is, um, <laughs> that was an epic fail. We need to choose the first option, then what's this fuss all about? And then we need to basically tell him uh, that he's really pissed off. He's off his tits on snuff balls. Hilarious again! <laughs> anyway, so we need to just keep saying all about the treasure map. Um, so every dialogue option just keeps saying, did you say treasure map? Did you say treasure map? I accidentally keep st um, choosing the top option. And we now get the treasure map, so that's it. Keep asking about the treasure map, job done. Then we uh, just pick the second option there. Don't know if that's necessary, but I did it anyway. And then we can just do toodaloo, old chap. And now we can open up that said treasure map while we leave the snob to sniff his snuff. It's nice. So we've opened that up. Now we know where the treasure is. What we need to do is interact with the skunk before we leave. That's going to give it the death fart of absolute death life. The guy reading in red is just cracking me up, by the way. Everything about the game just cracks me up. Well done, Joe. Well done, pal. <laughs> Very funny game. So we're going to head out of the door now, the main door. And what we're going to do is use our eye icon with the window, which is just uh, close to the main door right there. So use the eye option. Because, again, that's how you look in things. You don't look with your hands. And then just steal the key. Nobody's going to watch. Grab that. Job done. Bang tidy. So then, boy, let's go get rich. Head to the left door. The sort of second one by the ferryman right there. The big main door, that'll do. And then we're going to walk just up past the paintings. Just where that armed guard is there, right there. But we're not actually going through the door. 
So what we're doing, there is a painting, the first painting on the left, very small one, a painting of some buildings and some sky. Uh, <laughs> very aptly named. I like it. Bet that'll sell for about six million. Look at that with the eye icon, and then if you, just by the gate, sort of at the, um, very close to the bottom of the picture there, interact with that, and then the safe will open up. Now we can go into our inventory, grab the key, interact that with the safe. Somehow the armed guard doesn't want us stealing paintings, but he's okay with us opening a safe and stealing some treasure. So, well, cheers, Mucka. You, um, you enjoy your job of pointlessness, <laughs> it seems. Um, you've got a Ralph Wiggum there sticking a flute up her nose for some reason. Um, <laughs> right, now we're going to head back to the frontal lobal area again. So we're going to be coming up to one of my favourite, favourite parts of the game, just from one bit. So first we're going to head up to the left, up the hill again. Fair play, uh, t tenor banknote lady here can run. And what we're going to do is pick up a severed head. Which, I mean, they all look very appetising. A couple there with maggots sticking out of it, and... Wow, that looks like a lamb skull. What the hell? So anyway, she's cool, so we're going to pick up the severed head and head back to the right. Next, we go into the... Graveyard once again. And stick your bushy head through the hole. Shouldn't need no lube, you should be good to go. Right, so, again, a couple of things we've got to do in one hell of a pleasant area. Now, we need to grab the severed head and use it with the barrel full of bugs. And with that, we get a um, pick it up, of course. Remember to interact with it just to pick it back up. Uh, so with that, we get like a half-eaten head and with some other stuff with maggots in it. So get that head again, put it in the barrel full of bugs. Make sure to interact with the barrel again. And this time, we get a skull. So all the flesh is gone. Now what we need to do is use the skull and interact that with the satanic altar where we got the lamb earlier on, which made the dead guy not so dead. Uh, head to, into the right door now, and we've got like this little cool ass demon room. A uh, couple of uh, dialogue options we're going to be choosing here with B Tony Hawk Birdman on the right. So let's choose the third option first. Why do you have a massive bell? And <laughs> then choose the first option. What do you mean by Pearl Famine? First option again. Sorry, I've done that very quickly. Um, I, I was skipping through the dialogue, didn't mean to do that. So the first option again there. Then the uh, first option again. And then it'll be the second option. But I made a sacrifice at the altar. So it's the third option, then first, 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 then second. Um, so apologies about that. But here is my most ultimate favourite part in the entire game. Bah! <laughs> you had a devil's ass winking at you. And smiling in that British style that Americans like to take the mick out of us for. So, that, that's just the best. Genuinely, there's nothing else we can say apart from that is the best. Uh, make sure to interact with the pearls on the left next to the fantastically bearded devil there. God damn it, I'm jealous. And then we can just head all the way back out and we're going back to the town. I can't believe a devil's ass just winked at me. So when we get into the town area then, we're going to go back into the door behind the Merry Townspeople. There it is, just on your right or your wrap or whatever. Now we need to get the pearl out and that creepy but very cute-eyed looking lady there who's just staring at us. Use the pearl with the girl. We're going to get a little swap. Well, at least she stops staring at us. Stalker alert! Anyway, she's good. She... Uh... Well, she's gone. She didn't have to walk, luckily, I suppose. So we get the achievement called Swapsies. Also, what we need to do now is use the Amethyst with the brooch, so the sort of blue diamond there, with the, well, bit of jewellery. Interact them. Again, all you got to do is press the A button there um, on each one. And then we can go to the left and talk with the Boatman. Like a very, very cheap-ass imitation of Batman.
So we're coming up to the end of the game. What we're going to do is head right into the church. Obviously, since there's only one way to go, really. Tidy. Now we are going to interact with the with Mr. Big Dong in the red dress. There he is. So have a chat with him and then choose the first option. Can I come in now? Well, there we go. Can I come in now? There we go. And she'd be like, hey, brah, screw you. And we'd be like, right, fine. Well, we've got what you need. So what we need to do, go into your inventory and use the crown with the cardinal. And we'll just say happy days. That's gorgeous. Next, we need to use the necklace. It doesn't matter what order you do this in, by the way. I just done it in this order because, because I'm, because I can, and I'm super cute. So that's what we need to do: the crown, the necklace, the brooch, or the brooch. Is it the brooch or the brooch? Oh, I don't know. Anyway, it looks super cool. And then use the supple butted boy. So that is the crown, the boy, the necklace, and the brooch slash brooch, whatever the hell it is. They've got their, they've got what they want. Now we get what we want. So, it's time to die. Actually, we're going to be doing two endings. So, make sure don't not to go in all guns blazing. So, head into the trophy room. But very importantly, don't go anywhere yet. After this little cutscene, we're going to be making a save. So, whip out your start menu, save the game, you can overwrite save one or whatever, or you can do whatever the hell you want, and now let's go and talk to Heavenly Peter. So we got two endings, one for talking and one for killing. The first one we're going to do, because we are super cool, as she calls them a dickwad, we are going to go with the talking of life. Um, she whips out the sword, and what we're going to do is talk to him a couple of times, and then we're just going to slice his head off. You bastard! <laughs> so that's what you can do. You don't actually have to talk to him. You can just um, press X to get your sword out and slice him up. Everyone looks really bothered and disgusted by that, obviously. And then there's just going to be this little cutscene. Again, you can do any ending you want, particularly first, but just, you know, it's always fun to kill him. So watch our little £10 note um, run with the head of Heavenly Peter for a minute. <laughs> Right, so after this di bit of dialogue is done, um, and, well, we, we're basically going to be told to be punished. But what we're going to do is go on a nice slaughtering rampage. So get your sword out, and then slice this guy's head off. There we go, and the next guy's head off. So, two guards down, nobody's going anywhere. We're going to head to the left. And then we're going to kill this woman on a cliff. A, per pressure, a precociously poached... Oh, it. Man, try saying that three times. Well, well she can't because she's dead now. Now we're going to slice our... Uh, we're going to kill these two guys. With such fantastic screams and facial expressions. And the uh, guy sitting down, you can just leave. Uh, we can't kill... You cannot kill absolutely everyone on screen. Um, but we can kill the majority. Um, for some reason, some, some are just immune to death. So, um, <laughs> the brief respite of sadness drinking alone, we're going to kill uh, the two people on the left right here. Let's just make sure, thank you Joe Richardson, what a game. Uh, kill this guy, who was aptly named this guy. And then we need to kill the guy at the forefront of the screen, just slice him in half. Mm. Protein-ish. And then we are going to kill the two fishermen, <laughs> or fisherwomen. 
And there's going to be just one more guy for us to kill right here. And as soon as the achievement unlocks for the end, immediately press the start button and load up your first save again. I accidentally um, load up this save. Don't do what I just done. Um, so we're going to now speak to Heavenly Peter. Now, this bit may be confusing. And all it is simply doing is putting your sword away. So, what's up, dickwads? Again. And then what we're going to do is uh, speak to the heavenly dude himself. Eventually. And then when the... Uh, with the dialogue option then, we need to be choosing the third option, Rich You Say. Or the fourth option, sorry. Rich You Say. Um, I don't know how many times you've got to uh, interact with it. I interacted with it... I interacted it and said the same thing three times, but basically just put your sword away by pressing the X button, and that is where the game will end. So, dialogue option, rich you say, then just put your sword away, and then you should get this screen to get the final achievement. Just burp and fart a total of ten times until the achievement unlocks. And that is generally, hilariously, one of my games of the year for many, many reasons. Um, so thank you, Joe Richardson, but that is the end of the <laughs> Procession to Calvary. Hopefully, there's going to be another game from him soon, and everyone who worked on it. But thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. Hopefully, you enjoyed the game as much as I did, and hopefully you enjoyed the guide as well. Don't forget to check me out on my socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. Um, speaking of which... Uh, big huge shout out to everyone who continues to support this channel on Patreon. You guys and gals are absolute legends. And of course, don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe as well. So that is that from me, guys and gals. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye bye. Big love.